friends, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, into addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you have a loved one or family member or workmate that you want to help with a nutritional supplement program, we can help you too. Our number is 844-236-6010, 236 you can also uh, purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program at brightsideben.com or you can go to my blogs criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. We update both regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. You can purchase the Beyond Tangy Tangerine or the Ultimate Enzymes or the Fucoid Z or any of the longevity products you hear us recommend on the program right off the website. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And, of course, if you're interested in purchasing any of our skin health products, Truth Treatment products, go to truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Take a specially long look at our retinol gel made with 5% retinol. You're not going to see that anywhere, folks. Not only that, but you're also going to get a big old dose of premium lipophilic fatty vitamin C with your retinol gel. My retinol gel is made with 25% vitamin C. No preservatives, no fragrances, no waxes, nothing irritating. Just good old retinol and vitamin C and a couple of uh, ingredients that help improve the penetration of the retinol and the ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate, also known as premium vitamin C. TruthTreatments.com. That's TruthTreatments.com. Okay, bottom of the hour, we're going to talk to Bill Henderson, who's a cancer researcher. Been getting a lot of letters about cancer, melanoma, Various types of cancer. You know, cancer rates haven't really gone down all that significantly, consider we've, considering we've been spending trillions of dollars on the so-called war on cancer. Bill Henderson is going to tell us why. His latest uh, book is called Cancer Free, Your Guide to Gentle, Non-Toxic Healing. Uh, Bill's going to talk about fructose and cancer today. Fruit sugar does not feed cancer, says a new report. And Bill will tell us about that as well as some other, uh, some other uh, strategies for dealing with cancer in a non-toxic in a gentle, non-toxic fashion. Uh, the book is called Cancer Free, and you can get it on Amazon.com. We'll talk to Bill at the bottom of the hour, and we'll take your calls in our next segment at 844-236-6010. Speaking of cancer, there's no more natural biochemical in the body that is associated with the development of cancer than the hormone that we talked about yesterday, and that's estrogen. On yesterday's program, we talked about the relationship between estrogen and all inflammatory disease, which basically means all disease. Despite what you hear from your OBGYN, from the, the mainstream press, from the, uh, from the standard medical dogma, despite what most people say about estrogen, it is not a female hormone only. It's a growth and inflammatory hormone. It's a fat storage hormone. It also suppresses digestive enzymes. There is a huge relationship between health misery of all kinds and how the body handles this very important fatty hormone, fatty substance, which actually is a type of cholesterol. Did you know estrogen is a version of cholesterol? It's a tweaked version of cholesterol, and it is extremely, extremely potent stuff. When I was in my compounding pharmacy, I didn't even like making estrogen creams, natural estrogen creams, so-called, and triest and biest. 
because the stuff is so darn powerful and so darn toxic. Unlike its its cousin or its analog or its uh, its uh, colleague, its uh, uh, opposing entity, which is progesterone. Progesterone and estrogen balance each other out. Progesterone is completely non toxic or pretty close to completely non toxic. On the other hand, estrogen is super duper toxic, especially in some of its forms. Nonetheless, the stuff is mega important. It has lots of specific roles to play in the body. It pretty much affects every system in the body, including the immune system, the digestive system, the lungs, the brain, the nervous system, the skin, secretion of fluids. All of these depend at least partially on estrogen. Estrogen is also involved in the production of connective tissue. If you have issues with excessive production of fibers, if you've been diagnosed with something, anything that has the word fibrosis in it, sarcoidosis, you almost certainly have an estrogen issue and an inflammatory issue. So contrary to what you hear in the press and what you hear from the mainstream medical model, estrogen's basic job is not about female stuff. Men have estrogen too, although obviously women have more. Estrogen's basic job is to support the body's action specifically biochemistry action. It tells the body and the biochemistry it's time to make stuff, secrete stuff, produce stuff. It's time for cells to divide. It's time for action, as opposed to progesterone, which tells the body it's time to relax, time to grow, time to repair. When the body is in action, it's not growing and repairing. It's moving. It's using up resources. It's not storing those resources. Progesterone is the opposite of estrogen and it's a growth and repair and relaxation substance unlike estrogen, the opposite hormone, the opposing hormone, which is an action element. Its job is to facilitate the action and the division of cells. And estrogen, by the way, is not necessarily this magical youth potion that you hear from the mainstream press and again, the mainstream medical model. Estrogen in some of its forms is toxic stuff. And in some of its forms, it's associated with aging. When I say some of its forms, I'm talking about the dozen or two dozen even different types of estrogen that are all related to byproducts, derivatives, how the body processes estrogen. And that's the key to understanding estrogen. It's heavily processed by the body and it's heavily processed into various derivatives by the digestive system. This is the key to working with estrogen. Surprise, surprise. If you listen to this program, it's, this is what we talk about all the time. Digestive health is intimately linked to estrogen health. And by the way, if your doctor is still recommending estrogen for osteoporosis, he needs to go back to biochemistry 101 because it's not estrogen that builds bone. It's progesterone that builds bone. What's more, if we're sick and we're inflamed and we're nutritionally deficient and we mal uh, ma have malabsorption, we're not absorbing our nutrients, which are, by the way, these are the real causes of, of decreasing bone density and osteoporosis. It's not a lack of hormones. The real cause of osteoporosis, like the real cause of all degenerative conditions, is inflammation, nutritional deficiencies, malabsorption, digestive problems. And if we got all of these issues and then we start taking estrogen, which amps up the system, now we are really asking for trouble. If you have any health condition, folks, and I'm talking any health condition, especially digestive health problems, if you've had a gallbladder removed, if you have liver problems, intestinal problems, pancreatic issues, stomach issues, and your doctor gives you estrogen, you are really playing with fire. And when I talk about playing with fire, I'm talking cancer and I'm talking heart disease, the two leading causes of death, both which have very important links to estrogen estrogen processing and estrogen replacement therapy, estrogen drugs. And estrogen, again, is processed by the liver, by the gallbladder, bile, digestive system in general. All of these are important for processing estrogen. If you have any problems with your digestive system, and that means stomach, pancreas, gallbladder, liver, intestine, or anything that has to do with the digestive tract, and then you take estrogen, you're really asking for trouble. This simplistic idea that you just take estrogen and now you're young and beautiful, really doesn't serve us and it's asking for trouble lifestyle nutrition diet exercise oxygen relaxation sugar reducing your sugar these don't lend themselves to big-time commerce but that's really what we got to be focusing on if we want to handle estrogen correctly and if we want to if we want to handle our health issues correctly as well all right i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side 844-236-6010 is our number Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 
844-236-6010 is our number. Got Bill Henderson coming up at the bottom of the hour, author of Cancer Free, Your Guide to Gentle Non-Toxic Healing. Bill is a cancer researcher. I've been reading his stuff for pretty close to 20 years now. Uh, his anti-cancer stuff. He's got a bunch of stuff on the web and a book, and he's going to talk about fruit sugar and cancer, but we're going to talk about a little... I'll get Bill to talk about estrogen and cancer and, and why cancer rates aren't really going down, despite the fact that we're spending trillions, at least we have spent trillions of dollars in the so-called war against cancer. Really, we're still doing the same kinds of things to treat cancer that we did 100 years ago. Radiation and chemotherapy and cutting things out, and we really haven't progressed very much when it comes to understanding cancer. You know why? Because it's not a medical issue at the end of the day. Maybe surgery is, maybe radiation is, but preventing cancer has nothing to do with your doctor, nothing to do with medicine. It has to do everything to do with the same things that we need to do to stay healthy in general, and that is work on the digestive system, work on the blood sugar system, make sure you're deep breathing, moving your lymphatic system, keeping your sugar down. Folks, this is not complicated. The problem is none of these real health strategies, lifestyle strategies, lend themselves to big business, lend themselves to commerce. You can't make money off of lifestyle issues and nutritional issues and supplements. There's not much you need to buy to stay healthy. There's not much you need to really interact. There's no, uh, not much interaction you really need to do with the, uh, with the consumer world if you want to stay healthy. You don't even need a gym membership. A heavy-duty rubber band that'll cost you five bucks or ten bucks on the internet is plenty. Uh, is all you need to exercise. How much does it cost to restrict your sugar, restrict your calories, or breathe correctly? How much does it cost to uh, to make sure you're uh, uh, sitting on the couch and spending two minutes or three minutes a day doing deep breathing? You know, oxygen kills cancer. Cancer can't live in an oxygenated environment. Cancer feeds on sugar. How much does it cost to restrict our intake of sugar, folks? In the long run. When we do everything we need to do to stay healthy in terms of supplements and diet and nutrition, we'll be saving money and we'll be gaining freedom and health and vitality. All right, we're going to talk about this mythology around estrogen, why the silliness about its use as an anti-aging panacea, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, about so-called bioidentical hormone therapy, which is nothing of the kind. It's not identical to anything, and then we'll talk about how it relates to pigmentation, how estrogen relates to hyper pigmentation and melasma because that's really what we're talking about here is is the skin and then we'll get into some uh, some topical strategies as well just as an aside if you have an estrogen issue the main thing to focus on is the digestive system especially 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 good bacteria and your ultimate enzymes your probiotics bioluminately essence and bile salts, which you'll find in the ultimate enzymes. All right, we'll continue this. Uh, we'll continue our discussion on estrogen and melasma and estrogenic health issues um, and vitamin C. We'll do vitamin C tomorrow as well as we continue talking skin health on the bright side. Time to hit our phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. Blossom in Texas. What's up? Welcome to the bright side. Hi, Ben. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's um, going on? I, uh, well, I'm seven months pregnant. and Congrats. Um, thank you. The biggest question I have is about vaccinations and mm. the vitamin K vaccination right now. Okay. And, vitamin K is not um, really a vaccination per se. Vaccinations are, are a special type of molecule, if you will, that stimulates the immune system. Vitamin K is a blood clotting entity, a blood clotting substance, and it's given to babies to, you know, they, when babies are born, because vitamin K is related to the digestive system and babies are born with a premature, immature digestive tract, especially around bacteria, uh, they, are, they tend to have low vitamin K levels, they're at high risk for bleeding, and so they'll give vitamin K as a way to support the, the blood system, the blood clotting system. Uh, it's not a vaccination, though. Is that, is that what your question was? Or did you have another yeah, question? Yeah, well, it, it is a vaccination that they are offering. Well, it's an injection. You're using injection, injection and yes. vaccine. Right, it's not a vaccination. Okay. A okay. vaccination is a specific kind of chemical that works with the immune system, that stimulates the immune system. That's a completely different entity. A vaccination is when they actually give you a virus uh, or they give you the, the enemy, if you will, a virus or whatever is stimulating the immune system to turn on immunity. That's a different entity. You're getting a vitamin when you get vitamin K. That's not a vaccination. It's a way of bumping up the vitamin K levels in the baby to keep his blood from being too thin and, and having him hemorrhaged to death. It's not a vaccination, though. A vaccination is literally when they give you a virus or some kind of what's called an enemy or an antigen 
That's different. That's a different thing. A vaccination is the bad guy. They stick the bad guy right in your blood. And that's one of the problems associated with, with vaccinations. You're actually getting a live virus or a live, uh, live bacteria when you get a vaccination. Or maybe it's an inactivated virus or inactivated bacteria. But with, a, with vitamin K, it's a little bit different. Vitamin K is, is a vitamin and it's an essential nutrient. The word vitamin, when you hear vitamin, think essential like air. Now, whether you need to have it injected or not, you know, that's, that's up for debate. Personally, I would be doing it if it was me, but there was my baby. But, um, you know, that's a decision you'll have to make. Did, I didn't mean to interrupt, though. What was your question? Um, and what about vaccinations? Would you, you know, wait that's, now that's a their year? Go ahead. Say again. Would you wait until they're a certain age? You know, personally? vaccinations are tricky. And they're not really a nutritional issue. It's more of a political issue. I'm very suspicious of them personally because you don't know what's in the vaccination. I talked to a, a guy a couple of months or about six or seven months ago. I talked to a friend of mine who's in the uh, skincare business or the uh, cosmetic ingredient business. And he makes a specific kind of oil that's used in, uh, in uh, skincare. And we were talking about oils and oil processing. And he mentioned to me that he was working with a vaccine company. And the vaccine company never thought to check if the oil they were using in the vaccine was rancid or not, if it was an old oil or not. When he brought the point, when he brought it up to them, they realized that they were using rancid oils in their vaccines as a base. And they never even thought about that. They were just using it as a vehicle, as a carrier. And so it's these kinds of things that make me suspicious, not to mention the thimerosal and all the other. It, it, I just don't, I have a problem with somebody sticking something right into the blood. Now, whether you, you, whether you use a vaccine or not, that's going to have to be a personal decision that you make. But I would be very suspicious, and I certainly wouldn't trust the government, and I wouldn't trust my doctor, and I wouldn't just trust the medical model just because they say we need it. Do your own research, and it may very well be that you decide you don't want a vaccine. You don't want to vaccinate your baby, although more and more it's becoming, at least in California anyway, it's becoming the law that you have to vaccinate. But there's all these issues. If vaccination is so effective, why do they care that everybody's vaccinated? If vaccination is so effective, then you vaccinate your baby, and now your baby's protected, supposedly. And then you don't have to worry about anything. But the problem is, they tell you anyway, that when you vaccinate your baby, now your baby is still going to be susceptible to, uh, to inoculation from other bacteria and viruses from babies who weren't vaccinated. Well, vaccines are so great, why do you have to worry about it? You see what I'm saying? Obviously, they're not so great. Obviously, they don't protect you. Otherwise, we don't have to worry about everybody getting vaccinated. So I'm suspicious, put it that way. And I know too much about the medical model, the history of medicine, the history of government, and the history of the industry and the pharmaceutical industry specifically to just trust that vaccinations are a good thing. So color me suspicious, although I can't tell you what to do. You'll have to make your own decision on that. Does that, does that help? I, I'm sorry to be vague. Yeah, I can't really no, answer that question. Okay. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it, Blossom. That, you know, that's just a tricky issue with vaccines. Oh, one thing I can tell you is I don't trust doctors at all. Zero. I've been a pharmacist for too long just to trust them. I don't trust the medical model. I don't trust pharmaceutical companies. And I certainly don't trust the government. Whether they're honest players and have our health interests in mind, that's up for debate. I just can't tell you that I trust them across the board. All right. My personal opinion. Okay, we're going to talk to Bill Henderson about cancer, his book, Cancer Free, Your Guide to Gentle Non-Toxic Healing. When we come back from our break, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Community. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also check out my blog. PharmacistBen.com and CriticalHealthNews.com. You can order longevity products right off the blog or off BrightsideBen.com. And, of course, you can always call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Okay, I am really excited to have our next guest on. Bill Henderson has been uh, publishing books and newsletters and been in the media uh, for, I don't know, I've been following Bill's work for almost 20 years now. His new book is... Uh, it's the fourth edition of his new book, Cancer Free. Fourth edition of his book, I should say, Cancer Free, Your Guide to Gentle Non-Toxic Healing. You can get it on Amazon or at bookstores. Uh, Bill's going to talk about fruit sugar and cancer. And uh, I also want to get Bill to talk a little bit about cancer in general. Thanks for joining us, Bill. How you doing, buddy? Just fine. I appreciate all that. Uh, yeah, good uh, to help. talk to you. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of a... 
I'm not a fan of a lot of people's work, but I am a fan of yours, and I have been for many years, and I was very excited when uh, your PR lady called me up and said that we could get you on the air. So before we get into fructose and, and fruit sugar and cancer, in your opinion, why is it that despite this trillion-dollar war on cancer that we've been fighting now for at least 30 or 40 or maybe even 50 years, why is it that we really haven't put a dent in can into cancer statistics with a little, perhaps slight dent, but nothing significant, in your opinion? Yeah, as you probably know, Ben, it's just the money involved. Uh, you know, M-O-N-E-Y is, is all you need to know about uh, cancer treatment uh, in order to understand that it's it's totally damaging to people in general, uh, but it makes a lot of money for a lot of people. And uh, as I've tried to educate people, Ben, uh, doctors are trained in medical school to treat symptoms with drugs and procedures. And once you understand that, you realize why the treatment of cancer is so limited. You know, Dr. Garcia, my co-author, who is an MD, by the way, and formerly trained MD, but a very wonderful holistic physician, but he and I have both of us studied about 400 different things that have helped people heal cancer that are perfectly natural, non-toxic, et cetera. These are substances and devices of all kinds and so on. The doctors that people deal with to treat their cancer know nothing about any of this stuff, okay? Mm. All they know about is, uh, you know, chemo, radiation, surgery, basically, and trying to decide which of those three and what kind and on and on. Uh, so, you know, I've talked to over 5,000 people in 68 countries about their cancer, you know, in a coaching service I do. And I always ask them the question, because most of them have been fighting this cancer of theirs for two or three years or more. And I say, have the cancer docs discussed with you why you got this cancer? Believe it or not, the answer is always no. 100% of the time, no. The doctors never even tried to discuss with them why they got it. Well. How do you treat something and keep it from happening again if you don't understand why it happened the first time? I mean, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's the problem. The, the medical system is totally corrupted by money. Now, you, you may not know the answer to this, but uh, maybe you do. It, it, in terms of the body has an ability to fight cancer. We all get cancer, and there are enzymes in, uh, enzymes in place that snip out mutations, et cetera. How many people right. do you think, how many people do you think including people who have cancer or who have been treated for cancer or who've been diagnosed with cancer? How, what are we talking about, 5 million people, 10 million people? Well, every year in the United States, it's about 1.2 million, I think, is the latest number. Those are the diagnoses. Yeah. Right. But total, yeah, and total people who are affected, would you say? 600,000 600, to die of it. But worldwide, the deaths attributed to cancer every year are 8 million, approximately. So we're talking a small, um, it's a small amount of people by percentage who are affected by cancer, even though we hear well, about it all the time. Sure. Is that correct? Would but you say is, that? It is growing every year. You know, that's, that's the problem. And in spite of all the research that's been done, and all the money that's been spent, like you mentioned, probably trillions of dollars, the number of people who get cancer and who die from it has been growing, you know, steadily for the last 50, 60 years. And that's despite Why? the trillions well, of dollars that, that we've shot at, the, that we're throwing at the, at the disease. What do you think, in your opinion, give us like a, a one or two of the top mythologies around cancer, the things that people believe that are just fly in the face of what we know about biochemistry? Yeah, well, they believe, as the doctors uh, reinforce for them, that cancer invades the body from somewhere, outer space or somewhere, uh, and this tumor shows up as something that has invaded your body and that has to be attacked as the enemy. And that's, that's where doctors start from, that kind of uh, incorrect uh, set of, of assumptions, okay? I don't know if you remember high school physics or chemistry, but if you start with an incorrect set of assumptions, right. you never get the correct answer. And so they're assuming that whatever this is, and that's what people read in, in the media and on TV and so on, that this cancer has attacked your body yeah. and has to be attacked by the doctor with medication and surgery of all kinds. Cut this thing out of your body and yeah. throw it away. It's you know, an alien. 
It's an alien that invaded your body. We got to kill it. We got to get rid of it. But it's our body. Our, a, a, a lung cancer cell is your cell. So if you kill a lung cancer cell, you're killing yourself. Well, cancer is us, okay? It happens right. to you, me, my wife, everybody that doesn't have diagnosed cancer. Hundreds of thousands or millions, nobody knows the exact count, of cancer cells are produced in our body every single day. You know, the cell metabolism is about 300 billion cells a day, something like that, that divide. And a small percentage of those divide incorrectly because of the damage to the cell. You know, the, the uh, free radicals generally from chemicals and what we eat and all kinds of other stress and other issues damage the cell to where it can't divide normally. The cell is uh, not able to breathe enough oxygen to survive. And so this was proven back in the 1920s, literally by Dr. Otto Warburg in Germany. Tell the listeners a little bit about part. tell the listeners a little bit about Warburg and his his work on uh, oxygenation and cancer and the formation of cancer cells. Just real briefly. Yeah, what he yeah what he found was that if the cancer if the cell cannot breathe up at least sixty five percent or more of the normal uh, oxygen to keep cells going naturally and dividing naturally and so on. It goes into fermentation mode and survive. You know, what he found was that the cell, like the human body, has a survival instinct. And if it can't survive breathing oxygen and breathing out energy and so on, it goes into fermentation mode. Sugar burning. Well, what's that? Well, sure, it sucks up sugar in whatever form it can find in the body, uh, ferments it, and continues to divide. Well, what he also found was that the function of a normal cell for committing suicide after it divides it looks at itself and says am i normal if not it's 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 out of here okay it, it commits suicide this is a normal part of that's the awesome our DNA. apop you're talking about apoptosis cell suicide and to me that's one of the most magnificent mechanisms in all of biochemistry how a cell when it sees it's dysfunctional will kill itself i want to talk about fruit sugar when we come back from our break bill we got to take a commercial so hang tight we're talking to bill henderson his book is cancer free your guide to gentle non-toxic healing i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side we'll be back right after this We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben talking to Bill Henderson. His book is Cancer Free, Your Guide to Gentle Non-Toxic Healing. And you can get that at Amazon.com. It's got lots of great information, uh, non-toxic strategies. We'll talk about a couple of these for dealing with cancer. Bill, before we went to break, you were talking about sugar. And uh, your PR gal sent me a, a, a press release. Fruit sugar does not feed cancer. So tell us a little bit about the distinction between fructose and, and ordinary sugar. And why is it that fr fruit sugar is, has a different effect on cancer? and cancer cells and regular sugar. Yeah, interesting. Ben, I, I was not aware of this until about three or four months ago, but uh, there's a Dr. Tony Jimenez who runs a, a clinic in, uh, in Tijuana called Hope for Cancer. And he has working for him, apparently, an Indian scientist uh, who has been researching sugar in general. Um, and sugar as it relates to carrots, uh, fruit, et cetera. And what he's found and what was uh, covered in an interview that Ty Bollinger did with Dr. Jimenez was the fact that L-fructose, the little L, lowercase l, in front of the fructose is uh, the way the scientists re refer to this type of sugar. Uh, and it doesn't mean exactly left, L-E-F-T, but it means a word that really describes left spinning molecules. That's what the little L means. Chirality. And a left spinning molecule, as it turns out, is not food for cancer. Uh, the cancer feeds on right spinning molecules oh. of sugar, which come from stuff like high fructose corn syrup and almost all the stuff we buy in the, heart, in the, in the uh, supermarket and, you know, refined sugar and so on. But the L-fructose is what's in fruit and carrots and beets, okay? Carrots and beets have the most sugar of any vegetable. And carrot juice, as you probably know, has been used by lots of cancer clinics for, for 
helping cancer patients heal for a number of years. And there's even a book been written called Curing Cancer with Carrots by a lady named Ann Cameron, which is kind of interesting. It tells how she did it by juicing five pounds of carrots every day and drinking five eight-ounce glasses of carrot juice every day. She got over her cancer. Well, you know, the fruit, as it turns out, and Dr. Garcia, my co-author, and I have been warning people about, about eating too much fruit for a number of years, and it's in our book. You know, we say the fruit is helpful. It has a lot of nutrients in it. But be careful. Don't eat too much of it because, and don't drink fruit juice and so on because it's too concentrated with the fruit fructose. Well, hey, that ain't necessarily so. So we've learned. Um, the fruit does not cause cancer to, to feed on it and grow. It's about that simple. So how, how exactly is the R form, the, the right-hand form, being created? Is it in the processing of, high, of, of the fructose into high fructose corn syrup? No, no. It, the fructose itself, which is the type of sugar that's in fruit and carrots and so on, happens to have the little L in front of it. Uh, the other forms of sugar, and the little the R is not in front of the fructose. There's another name. It's a scientific name, basically. Um, but it, it is a the opposite spinning of the bell fructose in fruit. It spins to the right instead of to the left. And it turns out, through the research that's been done on this fairly recently, within the last year or two, literally, uh, the, the cancer feeds on the right spinning molecule of sugar, which is, you know, of course, uh, what is refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, that kind of stuff. Uh, but if it's in fruit, even fruit juice, it's not going to harm you, uh, uh, you know, if you have cancer. And that's, that was what we learned, and it's quite interesting. So when we talk about cancer being a ferment, cancer cells being fermenting cells, and we're talking about their sugar feeders, so to speak, and they're burning sugar to get energy, you're making a distinction between ordinary sugar and the L-fructose that's found in fruits and vegetables. That is correct. And even Interesting. Dr. Menace would surprise me. He said that if, if honey and syrup, even maple syrup, are processed correctly and not, don't have additives and this kind of thing, they're also quite uh, harmless for people with cancer, which surprised the heck out of me, frankly. Well, what about the liver issue, fructose being metabolized by the liver? Is it, uh, any issues with burden on the liver or stressing the liver? No, not really. Apparently, there is no real stress caused to the body by uh, this type of, of fructose. You know, it, it's quite helpful. You know, obviously, fruit has a lot of nutrients in it that are helpful to our body. And the only thing that we've been concerned about and trying to warn people about is this excess of the fructose. Uh, but apparently, that's not even an issue. Interesting. Which is very interesting. I mean, it, we're going to have to update our book about this, I guess. All right. So let's get to uh, some, some the nuts and bolts here. Somebody gets diagnosed with cancer. What would it be, the, what, in your opinion, or if it was you or your family or a loved one, God forbid, what, what would be the first thing you would do? Well, the first thing they would hopefully do is start doing some research. Um, there is lots of information available now, as you know, on the Internet. Uh, some of it's junk, and, you know, you have to kind of sift through it to some degree. But there is so much information now that was not available. And when I was trying to help my late wife about 21 years ago, she passed away and with cancer, and I tried to help her, but there wasn't any information available that I could find. Well, now there's really no excuse. There's lots of information available, videos, all kinds of books and articles and things that basically educate people about what cancer is and how to deal with it. I mean, our book, The Cancer-Free Book, is one, but there are several others now. There are people much younger than me, thank God, who are, are educating people and will be around a lot longer than I will. Okay, so, so it's there. So step number one is get educated. Step number one, I'm assuming yeah, you're right, absolutely. get educated, get informed. What is yeah. cancer? How you I treat it? I understand what cancer. Absolutely. Right. 
Okay, now how about in terms of remedies or treatments or protocols, ox hyperbaric oxygen chambers, fasting, uh, rife machines, uh, w w IV nutrition, w what do you think? Some of the go-to well, remedies or strategies. As I mentioned, I think, you know, Dr. Garcia and I have studied about 400 of these things. Uh, you know, devices, like you mentioned, uh, substances, et cetera. There are lots of them around. And they've been discovered over the last hundred years, and people have used them, and they've helped people heal cancer. What we've tried to do is boil this down to the essentials, because nobody can do all this stuff. You know, how do you figure out which of them to discard and which ones to pay attention to? So what we've used is our experience with people healing themselves of cancer to try and outline for people an essential list of things they need to do daily. These are substances that they take to help support their body and food that they eat in this particular fashion. Uh, you know, those things really have been enough to heal so many people that we urge people to try that regimen first, at least for a few months. And, big A-N-D, by the way, deal with the cause of their cancer. What is it that brought this on? You know, this cancer is not an accident. It happened to them for some reason. Mm -hmm. And we try to help them figure out what that reason was and deal with it. All right, so now you have uh, a couple of things in the book. You did, I, I noticed you didn't mention anything about Nick Gonzalez or, or digestive enzymes. Do you know anything about that for cancer? Have you heard about that? Oh, sure. I've heard a lot about it. Unfortunately, we lost uh, Dr. Gonzalez here about three months ago. I did not know that. Uh, he passed sorry. away. Yeah, he was a wonderful uh, holistic physician. What, what's your but take what on he, using uh, enzymes? What's your take on systemic enzymes? Yeah, I think the, the pancreatic enzymes in particular are quite helpful. For people, uh, trypsin, chymotrypsin is what they're called. Basically, they help um, break down the uh, the coating, the protein coating that cancer cells use to protect themselves from the immune system, and that's one of the main reasons that he found they were helpful. So is we it... do recommend people take enzymes, but we, they take them in a form. Uh, it's it's actually a barley uh, pill that's made from a young barley leaf that has 3,000 enzymes in it, all wow. of them. You know, the proteolytic enzymes that Dr. Gonzalez recommended, of course, are in there. And we recommend people take enough of those that the body will take the enzymes it needs, use them, discard the rest, okay? I mean, we can't determine what enzymes our body needs. Bill, we're, we're out of time, buddy, I, but there's so much more I want to ask you. Can I get you to come back on? I'm going to call Mariah and see if I appreciate that, Bill. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bill. Book is Cancer Free, Your Guide to cancer, uh, Gentle Non-Toxic Healing. You can get it off Amazon or you get it off uh, uh, Bill's website, beating-cancer-gently.com. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.